And welcome into another edition of A Closer Look. I'm your host, Dwayne Nelson. And with me today is two fine ladies from the Alzheimer's Association. And with me is Meredith Sieber, is the manager of development, and Tabitha Ebert, the manager of programs and education. And also we have Molly with us as well, your daughter, uh, with us on our segment. Talk just a minute about how long you folks have been in the Tri-Cities area. Absolutely, we have been um, stationed in the Tri-Cities since the early 80s. And uh, we just actually recently moved our office to Kingsport uh, just last year. So you've been around a while and, and doing a great cause here. And we have Molly here with us and what is her significance today that you're gonna be talking about? A lot of nice, good things coming. Absolutely. We have some wonderful events coming up, um, our longest day, and Molly is going to be doing a um, lemonade stand on the longest day. We have a lot of wonderful teams that day. I know Meredith can give you more information about those. Yeah, the longest day is June 21st, so it's actually summer solstice. Um, it's the sunrise to sundown. It's a fundraising uh, program that we do with the Alzheimer's Association. Right. Basically, you can uh, do whatever activity you'd like to do for fundraising for the association. So Molly, for example, is going to have a lemonade stand at the office that day, and she's going to be fundraising for uh, to find a cure. Right, Molly? Yeah, we like lemonade, yes. right? <laughs> and we've got Ann Duncan in Kingsport. She's actually going to dye her hair. Um, wow. She'll do some streaks of purple if she raises $500, <laughs> but if she raises $1,000, she'll dye her whole head purple so she's going all so purple yeah a thousand yeah uh-huh <laughs> so the longest day you can still sign up it's alz.org forward slash the longest day and um you know people all across the country are going to be doing this on the longest day and it's actually it's very significant for the caregiver and the patient as well uh, for the longest day because sundowning is an issue with alzheimer's patients right. it's a lot of anxiety and um, you know, distress that comes with that day that's the longest. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a great way to raise awareness um, since June is Brain Awareness Month. So, Are you excited, Molly, about all of this? Yes, I am. And what do you plan to do? You plan to sell your lemonade for how much? For one dollar. One dollar. So everybody can go by and get some lemonade from Molly. And if you want a magnet, that would be two dollars. All right, <laughs> she, she gets the prices, all the prices down pat. I agree. Inflation is taking its toll here. You're going to be doing uh, something for a worthy cause whenever you do this, and and it's a great time for people to to pitch in, and uh, you never know when you're going to need the services from the Alzheimer's Association. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about, uh, of course, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month uh, is June, uh, but it seems like every month is really Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month because it's something that uh, we, we need to always keep our eyes on and, yes. and uh, keep our, ourselves alert to. Right, absolutely. It's, it's really important because this month is really just about understanding what Alzheimer's is and just learn a little bit more about it. You know, there's been a stigma behind the disease for a long time, and we're trying to really break through that stigmatism and bring awareness to as many people as possible. So if you are interested in painting the town purple at all, getting some purple in your business fronts, um, we've done a couple proclamations this month as well for Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. Abbey to Virginia has already done theirs. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing Johnson City on June 15th as well, and we're hoping to get in a couple more throughout the month. So so um, bringing awareness is very important to us right now. It seems like um, sports agencies like NASCAR and uh, NFL and all the other people are starting to really take a hold of this and get the message out. Is, are you seeing that more predominant now? Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, there's a lot of celebrities that are behind it. And it, uh, Seth Rogen himself, his mother has Alzheimer's disease. So he's actually uh, heading up Polarity for Charity, which actually does grants um, for people looking for respite care. And, you know, celebrities alike are getting behind it. And, you know, it's affecting everybody. It's, Tabitha and I meet more and more people every day that it affects. So it's really not, you know, this 
you were, we were talking about it earlier, something behind a rock. It's so much right. more common now. And I think a lot of people are beginning to realize the importance of, you know, finding a cure and finding a prevention. Drug. And I was asking you, Meredith, about the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. And you had a, a very good balance of how that really works. Absolutely. Well, with uh, with Alzheimer's dementia, dementia is basically just a describing word for a set of symptoms. Uh, and it's an umbrella term. And there's over 180 different types of dementia that are out there. And one of those one of those is Alzheimer's. And so when people call and say, I think I'm experiencing signs and symptoms of dementia or Alzheimer's, there's several several things we tell them to get checked. You know, get your heart checked, mm -hmm. get your stomach checked, get your thyroid checked, get screened for depression, and get screened for anxiety. Because some of those things can present themselves as what we call a pseudo dementia an actual type of dementia that can be reversed if it's treated so are you finding that it's showing up in younger and younger ages we are we are uh, we're seeing that uh, the actual disease the actual Alzheimer's type of dementia is showing up even younger and younger uh, we see people as early as their 30s that have this type but theirs is a genetic form that they have is there any real way that people can see maybe an onset of this if you yeah, are there warning signs? Let's put it that way. There are. We have our classic 10 warning signs and some of the things to look out for. You know, people always say, well, I lose my keys all the time. Does that mean that I'm, I'm getting Alzheimer's? Right. We tell them not necessarily because um, if they're like me, I probably lose my keys 20 times a day. <laughs> uh, but if they, if, they're, if they can still track where they put their keys and try to help, you know, remember where they put those and retrace their steps, that's a good thing. But if they forget where they put their, or what to do with their keys, that could be a warning sign. We always say that, you know, typically when you lay your keys down, you may not have paid attention where you put them to begin with. Right. Um, or if you forget how to use the remote and to program the remote, that's okay. But if you forget what the remote is actually used for, that could be a warning sign. And withdrawing from normal activities. So if you have someone who used to engage in golf um, once a week with their friends, and all of a sudden they've stopped doing that, or they used mm -hmm. to be active in their church and they've stopped doing that, that could be a warning sign that something else is going on. Are there any tests that a person can take to see if they may have this gene or if they have the possibility of uh, getting the disease? Absolutely. They're, with the genetic form, they can actually go through genetic testing. Um, now, of course, that can be very costly. And so we actually, with the Alzheimer's Association, we fund research and medical uh, clinical studies. Mm -hmm. And people can actually get those tests by going through one of those clinical studies free of charge. And they can find out about those at our website, uh, trialmatch.org. Trial um, the uh, the other form, when it's not a genetic form, they can do what's called a mini mental status exam um, in, at their doctor's office. But the best way to also find out if someone has it and they don't have the gene for it is to do what's called a PET scan. Um, and that's actually something that we're able to provide here locally um, through, a, um, through a research study that the Alzheimer's Association is funding over at ATSU. So how would a person maybe get or be a part of that particular study? Um, they, can, they can actually contact our office at the 800-272-3900 or get on our website, our trialmatch.org, and sign up that way, and uh, we can get them connected with them. So are there stages of Alzheimer's, or how does that really work? Well, a lot of times people want to use the number stage. They want to say, you know, my loved one is in stage four or stage five. Right. But we know that with those stages, they can go in and out of those stages very quickly. One day they can be in stage five and they could go back down to a stage four. So we tend to use a uh, mild, moderate to severe. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as um, maybe keeping people's minds alert, is there any such thing as keeping your mind healthy Mm -hmm. And what are those tools that may be available for folks to do that? That's a great question. Um, a lot of people ask about crossword puzzles. They say, well, I do crossword puzzles all the time. What about those? Well, all those are good. Um, all you're doing is recalling already known information. We advise to learn something do new, learn a new language, learn a new um, musical instrument, um, read books that you may not have read before, um, take classes, because what you want to do is form new memories in your brain right. and not just recall those old ones. And uh, I, I know I was, uh, I, I saw a segment, I guess, on Dr. Oz about um, this program that a guy came up with that was so neat to, to kind of challenge your mind and, and mm -hmm. challenge your, your skills. And, and anything that we can do mm -hmm. mentally to help us improve, then that's going to help you as far as 
maybe not being so susceptible to this disease? Um, yes and no. We um, we think that you know keeping the brain active because it's that old adage, use it or right. lose it, um, can can help you know create those new synapses to create the new memories and things in the brain. But we also know that if there is that genetic form, that um, you know there there may not be a whole lot that that can be done to mm -hmm. to prevent it. After all, and we were talking about that because you, it's it's kind of like blood pressure or or uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. Some people don't have that history of it being in their family, but you still are, you know, susceptible to getting this mm -hmm. disease. Right, absolutely. Anybody with a brain can develop Alzheimer's disease. So yeah, and it's, uh, you know, and, and it takes a lot of care for these folks and, and to be able to, to do what needs to be done, I'm sure. There are support groups, I'm sure, that are out there to help folks that suffer from this. There are. We, we have numerous amounts of support groups in, the, in our communities and our, our support groups, we're proud to say that our support groups are ran by actual caregivers. Um, you know, it's, it would be easy for us to go in and facilitate a support group, but since we're not the ones who are living that life as a caregiver every day or we've not the one who's not been there in that role, um, it's easy for us to give them advice of here's, here's how to handle these situations. We like to put actual caregivers in that role of our support group facilitators so they can say that I've been there, I understand what you're going through. All right. Thank you, Meredith. And uh, we'll be back with more from uh, the Alzheimer's Association and, and some of the things that you can do to help yourself. 